Okay. <clears throat> okay. You I'll were saying it. something about me being mercurial? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very serious. You do write about serious things. And I try and write in a respectful tone. But it's a subtext. I think the subtext of your writing, as I understand it, is life sucks, life is hard, these are the things that you can listen to, you can do, that might give you a sense of purpose, a sense of meaning. I know you're going to... It depends on what I read of yours that I make that conclusion. Yeah. I, I, I firmly believe, and I don't think this is like a hot take, that life is better when you engage with art and creativity. I believe life is better when you are creative. I believe life is better. It has to be. Otherwise, what the fuck? Uh, you know, I, I, I feel like part of being human has to be that. Um, and I do feel like most of life is really fucking hard and really fucking short and really brutal and can be crushing in only the worst of ways. Um, and so, I mean, I, you know, there, there are days where, like, that's what's getting me up. It's like, I'm going to get up and listen to this record. And, like, that's why I'm getting up. Um, you know, I, I, uh, yeah. Is that where your connection with Yob comes from? Yob was a band who, when they put out Catharsis, taught me something else that could be heavy. Yob taught me that something could be heavy and be about seeking and not about aggression. Um, that it could express something beyond a sort of solipsist chest beating viewpoint, if that makes any sense. Um, that's a band that, I mean, for me, uh, and I would argue for a generation of bands in their wake, expanded what heavy is um, for the better, I would say. I've got, you know, one of the big things, and I've resisted it so far. <laughs> you know, the S tier, the A tier, B tier, C tier stuff. If you see it, I, I avoid that. But like my, my S tier would be Black Sabbath, Caius, King Crimson. That's mine. Yob doesn't belong here. Oh, I did. So good. Three I drummers saw... and they used them all. I was like, it's like you just justified three drummers on stage. Like, how could you possibly be anything other than one of the greatest bands of all time? Three drummers. And they used them all. You they were... used them all to great effect. It was, it was gorgeous. Yeah. Sorry, they also have. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, King Crimson Rabbit Holes to welcome any day. Um. I did forget my point, though. <laughs> We're talking about the TV. Oh, yeah. Yob is in its own thing. I can't even put Yob in a list of favorite bands. I can't put Yob. I, I just can't pigeonhole it. I can't pigeonhole the best Yob albums. I just can't. Um, Yob, for me, I have to be in a particular mental and spiritual state mm -hmm. to listen to Yob. Yob isn't my everyday. Yob is my, I take it out when I really need Yob thing. Yeah, it's, uh, it becomes like emotional labor. <laughs> kind it does. Of. You, have to, you, have to be it does. Willing, you have to be willing to put a little bit more of yourself into hearing it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the great cessation is, for me, what catharsis is for you. Yob came to New York once in 2005, was during their original run. They were going to play a venue called, oh, fuck. It wasn't the pyramid. It was gone to the ages. Uh, might have been the pyramid. But anyway, they were going to play this place. <clears throat> Small basement, $2 high lifes in a plastic, in a clear plastic cup. This is a, you know, this is not an official thing. Got to be two o'clock in the morning. And I was there with the guy who played guitar and the band I was in at the time and my wife. And uh, and it was two o'clock in the morning and Yob hadn't gone on yet. And Dove, which is an offshoot of Floor, they played that night. And there were, you know, four or five other cool bands that I vaguely remember because I was smashed. But uh, 
I didn't see Yav that night because my wife had to go to work the next day. And it was like, it was a rift in the relationship for years. So, so my primary association, I'm not even shitting you. Like I, I this was a, you. this was resentment. Um, so my primary association with Yav and the great, ces- with the great cessation is relief. Cause I was like, fuck, I'm glad that Yav are back and I'm going to get to go see Yav. Because Midian came through, and I saw Midian when Mike was doing that, uh, in between yobbings. But yeah, and then they get sued by this other band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But when but when <clears throat> Yob came back, I was like, "Whew, gonna go see Yob." And I've seen them many times since. Plus, with the the classic lineup, yeah, with, with Aaron and uh, Travis, mm-hmm. which Travis Foster no longer with the band. I, I no, Dave, Dave French is a monster. Uh, I, I'm curious. I'm, what, I will look forward to hearing him on record. He played drums in Tad Doyle's Brothers of the Sonic Cloth. I saw a Tad. Um, <clears throat> they were opening for Soundgarden, and it was a, it was in Berkeley. The story's worth the audience hang in. It's worth telling. So they're limited to, um, I think it was 101 DVs. Okay. By the way, I think all concert should be 101 dv um hearing damage is real and and anyway i i'll probably edit that out no, so fuck that. everybody it's important everybody is pissed off and the band that 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 opened it was 11 so jack irons um natasha schneider and alan johans yep and i i being a bass player 11 has no bass player and i'm like ooh, they suck no, 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 no. One of my dear top 10. No, I'd say they're a top 20 band. Uh-huh. They're absolutely mind blowing. Tag comes on and the audience is pissed off. And there's this couple assholes up front who keep throwing things on the stage and keep hassling Tad Doyle. And then Tad stops the show and says, look, motherfuckers, you, you throw one more thing. You say other thing. I am stage diving off of this. And, and, and I am not a ton of fun to be messed with. And they chill. It's like, and then Soundgarden comes on. Low wait, volume. Wait. Low volume. So Matt Cameron isn't smashing the drums. He's doing the deaf stuff. Mm-hmm. I thought it was the best. I saw Soundgarden four times. I thought that was the best. Um, it wasn't overpowering, but. Forces you to kind of. Hey, I'm just glad to be. I'm glad to be talking to someone who knows who Tad Doyle is. <laughs> does not happen in, in regular no, life. No, 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 it yeah. doesn't. No, no, no. True. I keep getting Facebook ads for uh, like a God's Balls beanie cap. Now, oh no, shit. I'm like, oh yeah. There's like a Tad flannel you could buy. I was like, man, maybe I should buy a Tad flannel. And I kind of decided I wasn't cool enough. I was like, I don't think I'm cool enough to walk around in a Tad flannel. <laughs> like I'd get punched at the grocery store or some shit. Someone be like, "You poser!" I'm like, oh. Then you get you get the guy that name one song exactly. That's what I need. Are there any bands that uh, that you are uh, awestruck by right now? That if you met them, talked to them, interviewed them, they would throw you off? No, really. I, most you know, I meet great people. Um. I'm very, very fortunate. Like, if I go somewhere, someone might know me, which is weird, but okay. Uh, and there are times where if I'm going to a show, I might email, and I know someone in the band, I might email and be like, hey, I'm, I'm coming. You know, I'll look forward to say hi, saying hi or whatever, like you do. But most of the stuff I'm interested in at this point is really just like people, you know? It's it's people with real lives and, and jobs and, and I like new music more than I like anything else. Um, so that's that's where um. So you know, I met Tony Iommi. I interviewed Tony Iommi in fucking person, like I did. Them. I interviewed Ozzy Osbourne. I got a question in my group call, but I interviewed him anyway. It fucking counts. You know, I've been around for. I've been writing about music for twenty plus years the last 14 plus for the obelisk i don't think i don't i can't think of anybody who 
who like I'm gonna meet and be starstruck by. Maybe Alan Johannes. <laughs> you mentioned him, but like I, you know, it's not that I don't care. It's not that I don't value somebody's work. It's that my relationship to the work isn't that. Um, I don't think I don't think a guitar player is magic because he makes his guitar sound fuzzy. Like I, you know, I've been around longer. I'm just older. I'm just older. That's all it is. It's funny. I I was interviewing Snake Mother last night. Okay. I found myself in. Total subjective idol worship. Really? Just yeah. Okay. That album, Snake Mother's album, hit me that hard. And I swear to God, every other question, oh, I love the album. I, I I I'm dreading watching it. Well, that's not that's not the same thing. That's not the same thing though, because I do definitely still nerd out. Okay. Uh, the Casanova record last year. Oh. I was fucking. Oh my god! Right? Holy yeah. shit! And then they broke up. But anyway, but like the new Howling Giant record i can't stop listening to it i can't they're bucket list band for me ever since they came out with um turn to stone chapter two i uh, which yep. um ha- i've so got a too. i have a howling giant calendar hanging on my wall i didn't like them no? i thought they were i thought they were kind of like a bouncy good time party band yeah but like but, a frog rock bouncy good time party band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I believe uh, three of them are graduates of the Berkeley School of Music. Which, oh, I would believe that. Which is funny because usually they, they end up doing some sort of progressive jazz rock thing. Like uh, Brian Beller, the Aristocrats, or a few that they kind of mind. Howling Giant, yeah, I'd probably babble like a little kid Yeah, with pretty, Howling Giant. That's a good record, man. I mean, the, the new one. The first one I thought was cool. The split, as you said, the the second coming of heavy split was was kind of a break breakthrough for them. Um, but man, just a just a band that has a perspective and character and writes songs like and the melody the melodies on that new record. I was doing we do uh, my daughter and I do rock and roll dance party sometimes, and we were doing rock and roll dance party this very morning to uh, Sunken City. Like we were dancing around the, the house and playing music loud kind of before school to get a little wiggles out it's a great record i was doing that with the end of age at the beginning of the year i a band that i love i believe they have a cut on the upcoming um ripple release the uh uh, the ccr tribute album so thrilled to see yeah who's on your radar now Who, who are the new bands that we should all be paying attention to talent giant uh what's this new now i'm looking at my notes let's see who's got a good debut album this year that ox and iwa split did you check that out oh hell yeah yeah those two bands pretty solid the new green lung is good it's big yeah those are those are all established bands though yeah well green lung are about to be good about to be much bigger um i agree by the way Slumbering Sun was cool. Okay. Uh, earlier this year, that's that's one to look for. I've also got Dun DDW. Yeah. High Priest. Did you check Aura that one Layer? Out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Aura Layer. Yep. Aura Layer is good. Yep. Yeah. King Volume's been on a roll. It's a good label. It's a label with a point of view. It's nice. Did, did you get a chance to see Castle Rad at all? See what? Oh, Castle Rat. Yep. Castle Rat. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. That was, uh, I'll be, a show. I'll be uh, we've got some good fit footage. Uh, you can check out the YouTube channel. Um, Julie, newbie doomer. She has no idea what she's getting into, right? No. So know. me, me, oh no, just being at a venue. I mean, the, that room was why they call it Texas. I have no idea because it, it's, it's the size of Colorado Island. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> The only reason I can pick up is like that's like that's American, yeah. It's like the size of Belarus in comparison. So she goes right up front to get pictures and off to the side. Me, I'm above the say. I get on that riser. I want out of the crowd. And um, she looks up and and the mob is there. You've got a guy slam dancing, you know, trying to do the get the mosh pit going. She got great. She got footage of. When uh, Riley comes out and throws up. Oh, okay. 
she's got it right there. Um, I thought they were amazing. I'll be interviewing Riley hopefully next week. It's cool. Great New York band. Yeah, they're a good one. They're uh, up and comers. They are definitely, definitely. I think I think With- a lot. I'm very interested to hear the record because I feel like that's going to be live. They're a show, right? I mean, that's live. You've got theatricality and costume mm-hmm. and presence and, and volume. Uh, whereas on an album, it's really more about the songs. And I liked their singles. Uh, I'm curious how or if any of the sort of drama will translate to an LP. Yeah, that's it. Big Which, expectations for them. Yeah. Okay, the point of the interview, and I totally forgot. How long have you been associated with the Doom charts? A few years. They, when they came out, they asked, and I was like, no. Um, <laughs> because I, you know, I'm, I do not group by nature. I, I self, uh, obviously, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, but eventually I kind of came around. It was like, you know, this could be a cool way to find music. I do not hear fucking everything. And, it, mm. you know, and the more the merrier. And just sort of it's a way for me to engage with more music in in whatever. Um, I haven't submitted a chart in the last few months. There was a kind of dust up, a political dust up uh, not so long ago that sort of caused me to question how how much I want to be associated. Um, but I had but I have nothing against Remy or, or any of those guys, certainly. Um, and they're cool. They, you know, I do not. When Doom Charts came out, I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. All right. That was my first response. That's what I'm looking That's for. Like, Thank you. Off the gate, knee jerk reaction was like, fuck a chart. OK, fuck a chart. Fuck you. Fuck you. This isn't Billboard. Fuck you. This is Doom. This is the underground. We don't need that shit. Right. That's where my head was at. Obviously, that is not what that thing became. Right. Right. It became like, here's a list of cool shit put together by some people who are into this shit. Right. That's as and as regards a mission to me, that is much more admirable than Billboard. Oh, God. Yes. So like, so. You know, so from the name Doom Charts, I was like, well, fuck this shit. And then a couple <laughs> years later, I kind of actually checked it out and calmed down. And they, and again, they were kind enough to extend the invite. And I, I said, okay. Doom Charts is how I came into contact with your writing. That would have been around, I'm going to say 2014 is yeah. when I, I, I had just left my wife. And I had a lot of time. And Elder had just come out with Lore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's like, <clears throat> It was an opening. So for me, you, um, Jupe, was Stoner Hive, Steve Howe, Outlaws on the Sun. You all are my idols, and you still are. Like, what? See, this is what I mean. You're a serious writer. I'm telling you, okay. you are it. You are an inspiration. <laughs> okay, thank you. The voice of no, thank come you. Come on, man. You write for freaking cream. Thank you. Oh fuck. <laughs> thank you. Okay. <laughs> This is officially my favorite part of the interview. I mean, your head is literally red. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I was going to go. See, now you're making me go this direction. How did the cream gig happen? Fred Pessaro, uh, Fred Pessaro, uh, formerly of Brooklyn Vegan, uh, has always. Oh, been, OK. Has always been like. Unnecessarily kind to me. OK. Um, when I worked at the Aquarian Weekly in New Jersey and Metal Maniacs in New York, we were kind of in touch because Brooklyn Vegan was always around and he was, mm-hmm. and that was very much his thing. Um, he's a top dude. I will not, I will not say or hear a bad word about him. Um, okay. He invited me when he started doing cream. It was going to be a whole digital thing uh, as a component to it. And he was like, you're the guy to cover this stuff. Let's do it. And I was like, okay, sure. Cause I'm game is what it is. Do you feel like you're walking in the um, footsteps of Lester Banks? No. <laughs> Have you read any Lester Banks? No. Really? Yeah. I, I have not read Lester Banks or 
Um, I read, I've read one Hunter S. Thompson book. I got Ooh, which it. Which one? I got it as a gift. It was uh, fuck, the one with the motorcycles. Oh, Hell's Angels. Yeah. Hell's yeah. Angels. His first book. I got it as a gift. Uh, an intern got it for me when I had interns. It was very sweet, actually. <laughs> That's why I read it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't read a lot of blogs either. You know, I, I don't, right. in addition to not having the time, like I, I, I wouldn't want to be introduced to somebody's take on a thing and have it make my own less mine. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I do, you know, if I'm trying, if I'm going to try and listen to a record and, and tell a story about it or tell what I think the story is about it, then it doesn't serve me to have other voices in there. Um, if I'm trying to figure out what I want to say about a thing, right? you know, obviously a bio will have relevant information. If there's a bio where you can always ask somebody, Hey, how'd you make this fucking record? And people will usually tell you because people usually like talking about that kind of thing in this sphere. Um, but yeah, I, you know, yeah. It's okay. I don't take it personally. What's the, so that means I can write whatever I want about this interview and meeting you. You'll never read it, so <laughs> I take a slightly different it's approach. It's not a personal man. I, I, I no, 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 it's a joke. Okay. I'll put the laugh track in. I'll insert it. Look, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to rag on anybody. No, I, no, no, no. I admire the work you do. I just, I just don't. I'm very particular about what I put in my brain. You know, there might, there's a great line. I think it's the best line that Monster Magnet ever came up with, which is, I choose my culture well. From, um, oh, I don't think it was Space, it wasn't Space Lord, but God damn it, now I'm, it's going to kill me to remember which song that was. I'm very careful about what I put in the brain. Yeah. I'm very, think. I've got to be. But, like, well, I'll you read. You wouldn't want to write something and then think someone else's thought as an original thought. True, true. That's that's what I'm scared of. It's like I don't want to write a story of a record that I read a review of two weeks ago, and I'm writing the same review without even thinking about it. Oh, that happened to me with you. <laughs> I was um, in. I was so the Magpie is a band from like ten miles from where I live. Okay. So I schedule an interview um, with Eric Sugg, and just before I go on to the interview, I'm writing my blog right about how hard it must be to have a band and a label and, and it's posted. You can actually watch it and see it. I go, yeah, I'm writing up the blog. And then I see the JJ Cox and scooped me. So <laughs> screw that. <laughs> scooped. It's like, I got scooped by a local band by you, the legend state with New York, man. I'm kidding. Um, it's just like, that was a funny moment. Cause literally you wrote exactly what, not word for word, but thematically what I was trying to take a look at. See, that's the, so, and so I understand your point. There's only so um, many ways to say riff, right? There's only so many ways to say this shit. I repeat myself fucking constantly. Well, like, why don't you put out a book of your reviews? It's like, well, cause I say the same fucking thing all the time. All the if, time. If you read everything I did back to back, you realize it's like a template and I'm just filling it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I have, you have <laughs> phrases that you go to, right? Like, right? You have frames of thinking about things. And, you know, after a while, you've been doing this long enough, that shit's just there. Yeah. It, you know, it, even if it, I'm, obviously you're not repeating yourself purposefully. It's, it's an organic thing. It's just life. And you know what? Some shit hits you the same way as some other shit. It feels more honest that, to me. That. I, I agree. And, there's, and I'm not arguing with you at all. I take a different approach. I do read. I deliberately read other people's stuff. Um, like on the positive side, I think Steve Howe at Outlaws of the Sun it has the PhD in how to compare other bands to other bands. He's like a coffee or a wine connoisseur who goes, this has, you know, 
hints of acid king right. with a sassant the blue oyster cult and undertones of just yeah. undertones i think steve howe's brilliant the, he's a the riffy terroir is yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and then i read angry metal guy I heard because it. they piss me off so much that basically if they hate an album I, I that I'm going to I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to review that one. People who put down the genre of stoner doom, saying that it's boring and say, don't don't embarrass yourself. Don't write about it. Right. It's, it's like, like okay. if you hate horror movies, don't do a review of Exorcist Believer. It's a hmm? pizza balloon. I like it. I thought for a minute it was a little homage to it. All of a sudden. <laughs> Pennywise is going to come out and they float down here. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Sorry. But no, I do read other people um, and I read it a lot uh, because I like to get that sense of, of what's going on out there. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm fascinated by how we tend to develop groupthink without meaning to develop groupthink. Nature of groups. It doesn't have to be. It's not irrevocable. Group think it can be, I think, a little bit destructive. If we start being reductionist, if, if we reduce Stoner Doom to the riff, if we reduce it down to a particular chord progression and a particular vibe, then we lose so much in the scene. We saw this happen with the hair bands. It got reduced to the hair, to the image, to the really fantastic musicianship, but it became the, it became so repetitive, mm-hmm. band to band. I still can't tell the difference between Poison and Cinderella when I hear them. Am I making any sense? To you? Make absolute sense. Um, who's doing that though? I mean, who is who is try- who in it is is trying to? Well, it develops organically. Yeah, I, don't think, I don't think anybody's trying to do it. How do you feel then about sort of the the memification of Stoner Doom. I'm totally ambivalent. Okay. I think it has really good. There, there's um, Ryan from Slightly Fuzzed does some great parody memes. Mm-hmm. He comes up with the alternative. That's one thing. I, I think where it becomes destructive is when the meme is saying the same thing over and over again. You know, they have the picture of Drake. Regular riffs, and then you know stoner riffs. I I think that I have a problem with. Okay. Okay. I think mean, memes are great. Memes are you know twenty first century means uh, of communication. Absolutely. That it, it's no different than a pictograph. You know, four thousand, five thousand years ago. Right. I just sometimes get concerned about the content, or or the overall culture within the meme. Mm. Yeah, I guess that's I, I I agree with that. Um I guess you're I guess a lot depends on yeah. what's being it's, said. It's moment. just a tool. It, it's yeah. like um um auto tune. Auto tune's not evil. Auto tune's Ozzy Osbourne would not have had five platinum selling albums if it wasn't for auto tune. He can't carry he hasn't been able to carry a tune since sabotage. So but they use it. 74. Yeah. 74, <laughs> 75. Those were the years. 74, 75, 76. By 77, it was over. But you better believe I respect the band, the musicians like uh, Sarah from Mesa, mm-hmm. who there's no auto tune in that. That's that's on natural. That is her. But it's just a tool. It's not evil. It's not good. It's like compression, mm-hmm. getting things to a consistent volume so I can hear it while driving down the road. That's not bad. No. No, I would not. I would not argue against auto tune. What's, what's your stand on the memification of metal? Um. Okay. <laughs> I honestly like you know it. It doesn't. I'm not that good at social media. Uh, it's some um, Stone Jesus memeing themselves was pretty funny for a while there. Oh, Rough that was Magic, some Rough Magic are really good at memeing themselves. Um. And okay, I see what you're saying. Record is another record. We're talking about yeah. fucking records. That record, yeah. um, Electric Ram. That record. But uh, yeah, I, you know, it's it's fine. I it's kind of like actually to go back to Star Trek. It's kind of like when Star Trek had Rihanna do 
the theme song for the last movie. It was like, what the fuck does Rihanna have to do with Star Trek? What the fuck do memes have to do with fucking Stoner Doom? It doesn't matter because that's the way culture is. And like, if you're going to have a thing as a part of a larger culture, you need to engage with the larger culture in some way. And so what you see is that like people like memes, people like Stoner Doom, people make Stoner Doom memes. It's actually pretty simple math. It doesn't bother me, certainly. I don't, you know, I, I don't know that I feel strongly enough about it either way to be mad about it. I think, and, and unfortunately we'll have to close. I can't believe how fast this has gone.